What's up guys, Eric here and welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Arrow Season 5, Episode 100, titled Invasion. This is the continuation of the Invasion crossover event from Supergirl and The Flash. So careful for spoilers, if you're not caught up with Arrow this season, you've been warned, let's get into it. So, if you're an illicity shipper, tonight wasn't your night. I can imagine you guys sitting on Twitter thinking about how you can complain to Mark Guggenheim and 140 characters with as many angry emoticons as possible. No, I'm not making light of your feelings, guys. I just think they did a really great job of pairing up Oliver and Laurel and having him ignore Felicity. Yes, I caught that entry into the room where he literally didn't even look at her and she was staring at him. So how do you guys feel about this? I mean, the Olicity guys too. Did you think this was too much or did you think it was great to see Oliver with Laurel? They spent a lot of time on this during the simulation in this episode. Now, if you were an Oliver Laurel shipper who thinks they should have been together, this had to be a nice respite for you guys. Laurel made Oliver so happy, it was almost like the relationship had never left us. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Now let's talk about the invasion stuff, the stuff outside of the simulation. Cisco and Felicity, along with Team Arrow, the new recruits, are working together to try and get some info on where their friends are using Dominator tech. This is very Independence Day, in my opinion. That's what it felt like. Uh, with some stumbles, they finally get information in the form of Laura Washington. I hope that's her name. It was only mentioned once and I jotted it down really quick. They call her Cyberwoman or Cybergirl, I believe. And the only character from DC Comics that this would be or could be like is Latanya Charles. But that was tied up with the Cyborg character and didn't really have much relation to what we saw on the show other than visually looking the same, in my opinion. As far as I know, this was simply just their version of that character, but it doesn't matter. She was taken out rather easily by Supergirl and The Flash. And I also want to mention Supergirl's entrance was ridiculous. Slamming onto the ground, pausing, then she rises up, hair down in front of her face, then she flips it up to reveal her face. It was super cheesy, but I mean, that's how she is portrayed on her own show. So I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, if you guys have any clues about Cyberwoman, Cybergirl, whatever, let me know in the comments. And let's talk about Wild Dog really quick. This dude gets on my last nerve. I mean, really gets on my last nerve. I hear some people like him, but to me, he's just plain annoying. He doesn't like metahumans. Like he really doesn't like metahumans. And then 10 seconds later, he loves them. He thanks them. You know, it's like he has no conviction at all. I get it. They saved you. And a thank you to them is in order, but don't flip flop on your beliefs like that. I mean, he's known to be stubborn. That's a character trait. That's a personality trait of him. And this was the complete opposite of that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the Arrow-specific stuff that happened in the simulation. I talked about Oliver and Laurel, but let's talk about his parents. I honestly teared up when he was saying goodbye to them. It was just a really well-done scene. The emotion was conveyed particularly well in this episode. Just everything in that scene reminded me of the early seasons, and it actually showcased the dynamic of that original cast, and I sorely missed them all. It was also very touching that Thea didn't want to give up what she had or what they had in the simulation. Then ultimately she realized her family isn't just her blood family, it's the people around her. It was just great stuff. I love that whole scene. Something I really appreciate about tonight's episode was their attention to detail. They gave us the chance to breathe after last night's huge action-packed episode. Like, take a deep breath, let it all out. I don't know if this would have worked as well if it was played in like a film format as like the second act of a film, but spreading it out over a few nights, I think it did work. They really showcased exactly what I wanted to see while still having Supergirl and The Flash doing their big stuff back out on Earth while the, everything in the simulation was going on and on the ship. The stasis devices that they were in reminded me a lot of the simulation tech we saw on the series Stargate. I don't know if you guys ever saw it, but they used it quite often to simulate training on that show, and that kind of, it kind of reminded me of that. Let's talk about Deathstroke for a second. And I said over on Twitter that he wouldn't be Manu Bennett right? I said that. <laughs> Several people conflicted with me. Several other YouTubers that make videos here told me that I was wrong, that Manu Bennett was in fact going to be on the episode. And I said in my videos that we probably wouldn't see Manu Bennett. I was corrected by people who said that Manu would in fact show his face in the episode and he didn't. <laughs> I don't think it was him. 
<laughs> then we got a really tiny scene with Deathstroke, then a big action set piece towards the end. No speaking parts, no mask off moments. He was literally there just to be a figment of Oliver's memories. It was cool to see him, but there was a certain charm that Manu brought to Deathstroke that was completely lost. Part of what made him such a great villain was the uh, conflict that he had with Oliver on a personal level, not just while he was wearing the Deathstroke outfit. And I think this was a missed opportunity, but it's kind of expected. Uh, Manu Bennett and the showrunners don't really get along, so no big surprise. I also think we got a big hint about Prometheus tonight. So my brother and I, we talk regularly about who Prometheus may be. The most logical choice is the comic book choice. Tommy Merlin is the Dark Archer. Uh, if it, you know, if it was that obvious, would they go with him? Is what I'm thinking. Like, okay, you know, this is the comic book version. Would they just go that route? Plus, he died in the show, so it'd be hard to explain him coming back without confusing people. Now, another name that's been tossed around quite a bit all over the place in certain circles is Walter Steele. He is in fact, still alive. The show never really gave him a send-off. So as far as we know, he's still alive. And I was skeptical about Walter at first because his name hadn't been mentioned in ages. Uh, whereas Tommy was a memorable character, but Walter, a lot of people had forgotten about him. However, tonight when Oliver and Robert were talking in the alley, the name Walter Steele comes up out of nowhere. Now they could have used anybody's name, but they used Walter Steele. Odd, but okay. I mean, it's just a name drop. But then we get another hint. Right after his name is mentioned, a man wearing a black hood that looks a lot like Prometheus bumps into the two of them. Coincidence? I'm going to say maybe not. This could be a very subtle hint they're giving us now, but I'm feeling a bit more confident that it could in fact be Walter. I still think Tommy's in the running, but it's looking like Walter may actually be Prometheus. It was also really nice to see Diggle in the arrow suit. That was a very nice touch. Uh, Ray having no suit or powers in the sim was hilarious. I kept thinking, what is he going to do? <laughs> he doesn't have his costume. The big action piece at the end was nicely done around the water fountain. We got to see Deathstroke, Malcolm, and Damien, which made a nice trio of big bads. I think they should add Deathstroke to the Legion of Doom. And the thing is, I feel like Damien Dark is much better without his magical powers because it brings him down a bit and just makes him a well-dressed assassin, which I think is really cool. And I think I would have liked him a lot better in uh in his season if that's would have been the case i mean a little magic wouldn't have been bad but he was just way overpowered for that season of arrow so much so that they couldn't really explain you know all the stuff but i digress i'm getting i'm going off on a tangent here um i think they should add deathstroke to the legion of doom i really do i like him he's more of a loner i get it but wouldn't it be cool to have him on the legion of doom on legends of tomorrow uh the escape from the ship at the end was cool the alien cgi was much stronger on arrow than it was on flash in my opinion um, they were saved by the Wave Rider, which makes me wonder, you have a time ship. You can't just go back 24 hours and take minimal risk to try and fix things. I mean, just a tiny risk. I mean, otherwise it's alien annihilation. I mean, I would think that's more important than the continuity, you know. I mean, they, they've they messed up before, right? But I guess they scolded uh, Barry, so they weren't going to do that. <laughs> you know, I don't understand all of these time travel rules with the legend. You know, jump ahead and actually see what happens. You're in the future. You're not affecting your present day. I'll just never understand them. All that aside, my final score for this week is going to be a solid 9 out of 10. Yes, it was really just a love letter to the fans of early seasons, but those were my personal favorite seasons, so it worked really well for me. I'm not sure we will ever have another episode that feels like this, but I will take what I can get. So what's your score on a scale of 1 to 10? Did you enjoy this episode, or are you a big Elicity fan and this wasn't your cup of tea? Are you an Oliver and Laurel shipper? And this was right up your alley. Let me know in the comments. Agree or disagree with anything I said. It's all good. Just let me know down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're new to my channel, I make videos like this all week long, all month long, about the TV shows and movies we love. Click boxes. Click circles. Help support my channel by showing a little love. I'm sure you'll enjoy whatever you see on the screen. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you later.